How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much once again for checking out another video right here at NextGenMD. So if you're new to the channel, first of all, just hi there, how's it going? I see that every time I put out a video, we are getting a few more faces, so that's awesome. It's really nice to meet all of you. My name is Gianluca, and I am a first year medical student right here in Ontario, Canada at McMaster University, and I'm just having a great time so far. We learn new stuff all the time, and I just found out about my first ever family medicine experience placement. Uh, so that's gonna be coming up soon, where I'm gonna be in a clinic, like a family medicine clinic, and I'm gonna be learning kind of the ins and outs of what family medicine is all about and I am super excited about that but I mean that's that's not really what I'm here to talk about today right that's a different video for a different time uh, all I'm really gonna be doing today is answering one very simple question for everyone and this question since I've gotten into medical school has come up time and time again from my family from my friends from some of you guys as well and that question is Gianluca just what did you do to get into medical school what kind of extracurriculars did you have I know you need the high marks but how many hours of physician shadowing did you have how many nature public did you have as a first author and then how many different countries did you visit and all of your humanitarian missions to go and help the people from around the world that many now guys, let's not get this twisted. I am definitely not saying that extracurriculars aren't important. They're super important, especially to many medical schools that will look at your extracurricular experiences competitively against the other applicants. I just want to go ahead and bust this myth right now that every single medical student, or even the majority of them, have dozens of publications in major journals and have traveled all over the world working with many doctors. As far as I'm concerned, although these activities are seriously going to help your CV and your application, that is definitely not the average medical school applicant and you definitely do not need to be one of those people that does all of those things. Now I know I said that many schools will look at your extracurriculars competitively against other applicants and it is true that some schools will not do that for the pre-interview part of the application process. However, I promise you that when you do eventually, because you're going to get one, get an interview at a medical school somewhere, you're going to want those extracurricular experiences in your back pocket so that you can bring them out at the interview and talk about them with the actual interviewers in a one-on-one, a one-on-three, -on -one, because I promise you, a 15-minute conversation about that one time that you got an A-plus in the hardest course at your university is not going to impress the interviewers enough to get you into that medical school. Now, luckily, in Canada, we have what are known as the CanMed rules. These are six rules. I'm going to link them in the description below. You can look them up yourself. Um, and what these six rules do, we've talked about them in the past. They are... Um, things, they are qualities that Canadian physicians should try their hardest to exemplify in their practice and in their person when it comes to being a good doctor. Now these six rules are the scholar, the leader, the professional, the collaborator, the communicator, and finally the health advocate. And these are going to be six qualities that are going to make great doctors. Now if you're not from Canada and you don't have the CanMed's rules, that's okay, because no matter which way you look at these things, however you go ahead and picture an amazing physician in your head, that amazing physician should go ahead and exemplify all of these six CanMed roles uh, and who they are and just the way that they carry themselves. Now, what's very important to note here is that although we have these CanMed's roles, there is no really ultimate thing that is gonna go ahead and if you do it, it's going to show this particular role. These are just the, the, the petals of the flower and it's up to you to go ahead and pick how you want to show the medical school's admissions board and then also how you want to improve on these things uh, by yourself in your own way, right? There are reasons why things like international trips around the world for humanitarian effort and publishing things in major journals uh, have been tried and tested examples of how pre-meds have filled out some of these roles. However, that doesn't need to be something that's gonna apply to you. Here at the channel, at NextGenMD, and again, this is my shameless, my one shameless plug for the channel today, okay? We are all about expressing yourself as an individual. You don't always need to do everything that everyone else is doing. They can give you great ideas, but don't be afraid to go ahead and work on yourself professionally, academically, uh, through whichever ways pique your interest. Because I promise you, if you go ahead and sign up for an extracurricular activity that you really do not like, 
Not only will it be super, super boring for you to get through many years of staying there, but you're probably not going to go ahead and learn as much from that activity, let it leave a lasting impression on you than if you would have done something else. And I think you're going to see that now that I'm talking about some specific examples for each of the different petals on the, on the Canmex flower. Now the first role that we're going to be talking about is the communicator role. Now as the name implies, this is going to be your ability to take concepts, things that you've learned, and explain them to other people. Now I'm going to keep this short, the three ones, uh, the three activities that I think are most beneficial or are very beneficial when it comes to showing your communication abilities are something along the lines of teaching other people a skill that you have, uh, teaching piano, teaching dance, teaching swimming, something along those lines. Uh, I was a salsa dance instructor for a little bit. I thought uh, that was a great way to show my communication skill abilities and not everything needs to be science related. Another thing for this is the, uh, the scientist in the school where you go as a university student back to high schools, maybe it's your own high school, and you teach for the day uh, for 40 minutes or so some things that you've learned in university or, or some little rudimentary science experiments to the kids and they have a great time. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that you could do is if you want to get a little bit more professional, something like a standard first aid instructor or an emergency first aid instructor where you're going over some more uh, healthcare relevant uh, ideas. Now the second role is the collaborator role. Now in this role, you're going to go ahead and demonstrate your abilities to work well with others because as a medical professional this is going to be a crucial part of your job. Now the three extracurriculars that I've chosen for this one, number one is a lab research assistant where you're an undergraduate student working together with a math master student and a PhD student or maybe a professor towards a single project. The next one that I really really like is volunteering in a hospital where you're going to be working with doctors, nurses, healthcare administration staff and then even the patients themselves. And then the final idea, uh, something that I really, really like doing uh, is I actually worked with a charity called Camp Aaron, which was a children's grief camp where I worked with social workers and then also doctors and other healthcare professionals to help children through the grieving process. Uh, and I thought it was a super important experience for my own development. Now the third role is the professional role. Now once again in this role we're reminded once once more that this uh, this application process doesn't all need to be related to science. In the professional role, one of the things that you could do is start your own business, start your own club at school, and demonstrate how you were able to run that business or that club throughout your undergraduate education. The second thing that you could do is be a TA. If you did really really well in a class and you want to go ahead and teach that to other people, yes it's going to show communication, but being able to uh, handle the marking, handle showing up to class and teaching the course on top of handling your own studies is going to demonstrate your ability as a professional. Now finally, the last thing, this is one that I did, uh, was be a supervisor. Something that I did throughout undergrad was work a part-time job and I actually worked as a lifeguard in the beginning but I worked with the city for seven years and throughout that seven year process I started off as a lifeguard and progressed all the way up to a deck supervisor and then other stuff as well. Uh, and in my role as a deck supervisor I was able to coordinate all the different staff and lead staff trainings, things of that nature. It's how you're going to go ahead and demonstrate your ability to perform as a professional. Now the fourth role is that of the health advocate. Now just like it says on the website guys, advocacy requires action. In order to, to demonstrate that, my top three choices for extracurriculars are teaching uh, soccer or tennis or a sport in your local community to some kids like at a community center or something like that. Another thing that you could do is join a gym or a fitness center and take up an active role there. I worked out uh, at the fitness center near my house for a very long time and then after I'd been there long enough I was actually chosen to be uh, one of the members of the month where I got to write up uh, a little blurb about what being active and fit meant to me and they shared it with all the members like on the wall so that was really cool. And then finally the last thing that you could do for a health advocate is support a charity, uh, something that's going to advance uh, pursuit of, of health in general. Now one of the things that I've really liked doing is the Movember charity where every single year I grow a mustache in support of men's health and it's a great time and also a great thing that I was able to have on my application. Now the fifth role is going to be that of the leader. Now the leader role is actually one of the more challenging roles when it comes to extracurriculars. One of the things that you could do is start a pre-med club 
at your university or some sort of club that's going to bring a whole bunch of people together and contribute positively to that group of people. Another thing that you could do is go ahead and collect some money, hold a fundraiser in order to support a charity or something that's going to uh, tackle a specific issue in your own community, right? You're going to raise some funds, donate them and help to build the community up. And that's a big part of being a leader, getting other people involved to support a common cause. And the third thing, this is actually going to be one of my own personal examples. Um, now this involves, once I had been teaching swimming lessons for a while and I taught the bronze med, I taught the bronze cross, I taught the standard first aid for a long time with the life saving society, I was then elevated to the status of an examiner mentor where I was able to help uh, teach the examiners how to be better examiners so that they could teach the instructors uh, who in then turn taught the kids. So what, what we see here is that I had risen up through the, the ranks of my position and I was now in a spot where I could lead an entire group of people uh, in a positive way. Now the sixth role is that of the scholar. Now in the scholar role, what you're going to be doing in order to demonstrate your abilities are winning things like academic awards for high GPAs or for doing research with your school and with other institutions and then even trying to publish that research if you can. And then finally, the last thing that you could do is attend conference presentations. Part of being a scholar isn't just doing the work itself. It's getting out into the academia, seeing all the other researchers out there and conversing with them in order for you to see see exactly what's going on. Science is such a big field and for those of you wondering some, about some upcoming presentations or, or places that you could go in order to do things like this, if you're from Ontario and you're in a biology program, look forward to the Ontario Biology Day which is held every single year. It's normally towards the end of the year, usually around the same time as medical school interviews and it is a great place to meet new people and just talk about science and really experience that scholarly role. Now guys, those are the six petals on the flower, and I know I introduced it as only those six petals, but if you look very closely, the center little bulb has something called the medical expert, and this is actually gonna be the seventh and most important thing that you could do to demonstrate your ability uh, to really tie everything in together. It's the medical expert's role to incorporate each of these six petals uh, all together into different experiences. So this is gonna be kind of like the capstone, if you will, uh, when it comes to your extracurricular activities. Now, one one of the things that I did that I really, really liked when it comes to showing my ability as a medical expert to tie everything together was that camp airing experience uh, where I was able to go up to an overnight camp uh, and, and work with doctors, work with nurses and all other stuff, uh, all of these other professions in order to help these kids that had lost uh, either a mother or a father or, or someone in their life that was really important to them. Now this was such an amazing experience for me and one of the things that I was able to do was teach people and learn things from other people and show my knowledge of science when talking with the doctors and, and doing all these different things. And these are the types of experiences that you're going to try your hardest to look out for when it comes to being a medical expert in that role. And that is it. That is all of the CanMed rules of successful, amazing physicians. And now it's up to you to go ahead and choose the best extracurriculars that you can find in order to meet these rules and demonstrate your abilities. However, I have one final tip when it comes to choosing extracurriculars for your application. And that is what I like to call the wow factor. Now when it comes to the wow factor, what you need to remember is that when you're applying to medical school, these thousands of applicants that you're going up against are the best of the best. They have these amazing marks and they have these amazing extracurricular experiences that demonstrate all of the CanMed's roles and more, and you need to somehow find a way to stand out among all of these different applicants. Something that when the uh, administration staff at the application office are reading these thousands of applications, they see your piece of paper and they're like, wow, I remember who this person is. Now in my opinion, things that I chose for these little wow factor experiences that still were able to relate to the cabinets were things like my uh, training with ex-military in, in recreational skydiving and then also my certifications in scuba diving with Patty being a shark diver and an underwater videographer. And when we're talking about these things, always remember that it's that very fine line that we're skating between being a very strong and memorable applicant versus just that crazy guy that swims with sharks and jumps out of planes, okay? And in order to keep yourself on the right side of that line, it's all going to come down to the wording and making sure that we're selling ourselves correctly as an applicant. Now, I don't really have much to say when it comes to that. It's all up to you. I really hope this video has helped a few of you. Give it a like if it has, and we'll see you around at the next video. But until then, I hope everyone's having a great day wherever you are. Uh, just
take it easy guys